Welcome to the Pre-Calculus Notes for Essential Skill D2. This section is all about solving triangles, any triangles, entirely. And our main tools are going to be the law of sines, the law of cosines, and the area. We're going to give each of these topics uh, its own video because there is some depth and there's some practice that's necessary. Uh, this first page is just a summary of everything that we're going to learn. Uh, starting with naming conventions, this is extremely important. When we have a triangle, you're not going to get a diagram. You just need to know that the lowercase side length is always opposite the uppercase angle. With the angles and sides lined up this way, the law of sines uh, has to hold. We're going to look at law of sines in this video. The law of cosines is something we'll look at in video number two. Those two laws will let us solve just about any triangle. We'll also look at finding the area. That'll be in video number three. And then finally, video number four is going to take a deeper look at why the laws of sines and cosines work. Let's look at law of sines first. What we have is a proportion. We know that the sine of each angle to its opposite side length is going to be the same regardless of which side and angle pair you look at. Here's an example. We're going to solve this triangle using the law of sines. Solving means to find the values of all of its sides and angles. This is a good reference statement and you'll see why it's true as we look at some examples. This is good when we're given two angles and one side. And we're going to name these cases after, uh, after the geometry reasons that we had for proving tri triangles congruent. If we're given two angles and the side in between, there's only one size triangle that that can be. In geometry, we use that to show that any two triangles with the same ASA pattern were congruent. If we're given two angles and a side that's not between them, we can also use law of sines to find uh, all of the other values. Now to the example. In example one, we're given two angle measures. So according to the above statement, this should be ideal for using law of sines. We start with a sketch. And I like to focus on the largest given angle and put that at the bottom left. I like my sketch to be somewhat accurate in that if I have a 64 degree angle, I want it to be bigger than 45, but less than 90. If I have a 38 degree angle, I want it to be less than 45. So this is going to be my side B. I'm sorry, my angle B. This is going to be angle C. Since it's triangle ABC, the remaining vertex must be A. Now, B is going to be equal to 9, so little b is the side length of 9. This is 64 degrees, and that's 38 degrees. The pattern is two angles and the side that is not included. So this is going to be angle, angle, side. Our strategy for that is law of sines. I'm drawing attention to that because in the future you're going to be given a series of angles and sides. You have to determine the pattern and judge which strategy to use based on that. So here are our unknowns. We have angle A, we have side length little a, and we have side length, little c. We start with the easiest one, angle A. The angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So this is uh, a pretty quick one to find. You will have a calculator for these problems. So if you don't feel like doing this in your head, uh, you can simply type it in. We'll box that. That's part of our answer. 
and I'm going to update the sketch. Now I'm going to use Law of Sines to set up a proportion. I need sine of an angle over its opposite side. This is going to work best if I start with a known pair. So 64 degrees is opposite this side of 9. So sine of b over lowercase b equals sine of, and now I can pick one of these angles. I'm going to start with C. This is arbitrary. Now, like any proportion, I'm going to solve by cross-multiplying. This is our exact form of side C. Uh, we are, of course, going to plug it into a calculator to get a relatable number. I'm typically going to ask you to round to the nearest thousandth, and so our answer here is 6.165. That's piece number two. Our final, final unknown is side A. So we're going to set up law of sines again. We're going to keep using sine of 64 degrees over 9 uh, because that's easier. We don't have to worry about rounding issues. If possible, we want to avoid using any rounded numbers, so we're not going to use sine of 38 degrees over 6.165. Very clear that is a 9, and that is an A. Now you can either cross multiply, or if you're comfortable with this process, you can just skip the middle step. A is going to be 9 times sine of 78 over sine of 64. And once again, we'll use the calculator to approximate. Again, we'll round to the nearest thousandth, so our answer is 9.795. Since our task was to solve the triangle, that means that our answer is a combination of all three of the unknowns that we had to find. If you put these numbers in your calculator and got different answers than I did, please check to see if you're in radian mode uh, in, the, uh, in the video for section D1. Uh, there's a topic on how to get your calculator in degree mode and make it stay that way. The next example is one that you can do yourself. Remember when you draw the sketch that capital letter angles are opposite the same letter, only letter ca uh, only lower case uh, for, their, for their opposite sides. So same letter, angles and sides are opposites. They're opposite each other on the triangle. Remember that when you start solving with the law of sines, you'll need at, one, at least one complete fraction in order to solve this, the proportion that you get. So that means any angle and its opposite side. Go ahead and try uh, example two. See how you do. Here's my sketch. Uh, recall, this is just my personal preference. I like to put the largest angle on, at the bottom left.
our pattern of givens is two angles with a side in between. Angle, side, angle. Anytime you have angle, side, angle, that indicates that law of sines will work well. Our unknowns are going to be angle F, side E, and side D. If you didn't pause before, pause now and try this out. It's important to practice these. You can use the last example as a very good model for solving this. Here's my solution. Here I have an accuracy problem. I don't know whether that 5 was rounded up from previous digits, in which case it was originally a 4 and I shouldn't round up that 7, or if it's legitimately a 5 and I should round up that 7. I'm going to fix the accuracy of this calculator so that it's easier to round to the nearest thousandth. Doc, settings and status, document settings, I'm going to change my display digits. Instead of float 6, I'm going to scroll down and fix 3. That means it's always going to show me rounded to the nearest thousandth. That will be very useful for this unit. So uh, if you do that, uh, that will help. I will make default. And now I'm going to do the same computation again just by pressing Enter. So it turns out that it properly should be rounded. There's a great sanity check you can do at this point. Uh, label the original triangle. And then just take a quick look and see if the largest side is across from the largest angle. See if the smallest side is across from the smallest angle. If it checks out, uh, then you're probably on the right track. Another great sanity check is based on the triangle inequality, which says that the sum of any two sides is greater than the third side. It has to be, otherwise it won't form a triangle. So we can check that by adding, uh, just estimating, the sum of the smallest two sides and making sure that it's larger than the third side. So 45 plus 58 is definitely bigger than 65, so we're good there. These checks are not meant to take long, they're just meant to help you avoid careless errors. The last things we're going to look at are a couple of applications of the law of signs. Uh, as with all word problems, uh, the math is not that difficult, but uh, figuring out where to, uh, how to get a sketch, uh, and what's going on, where to put all the numbers, uh, that is a little more challenging. So take a moment, read through this, and give it a shot if you think you have a handle on it.
let's start with the sketch. The first thing we have are two different stations. One is two miles east of the first. And so let's blot those. Here's Ranger Alice's place. Here's Ranger Bob's place. Next, we have to figure out what to do with these compass bearings. These compass bearings are measured from due north. And so this 34 degree angle is 35 degree, 34 degrees from due north. So here's due north of Ranger Alice's station. And our heading is going to be 34 degrees from that. So there's your bearing. Ranger Bob's angle takes a little more thought. 352, a bearing of 352 is right about here on the compass, but the angle away from north isn't going to be 352, it's going to be this difference. There are 360 degrees in a circle, and so 360 minus 352 is going to give us 8 degrees. So here's a line due north from Ranger Bob, and he's going to be, his line of sight is going to be 8 degrees west of that. I'm going to exaggerate this a little bit just for visibility. 8 degrees is not very much. So here is his line of sight to the plume of smoke. So here is our location. Let's call that point C. That's going to be where the plume of smoke is. Now, unfortunately, the angles that we know are not angles of the triangle, so we have to figure those out. Uh, since A and B are, are due east and west of each other, that means that these are going to be complementary angles. They'll add up to 90 degrees. So angle B is going to be 90 minus 8. And angle A is going to be 90 minus 34. Now we have two angles and the side between them. We have angle side angle. So we can use law of sines to solve the entire triangle. Let's look at the unknowns that we're looking for. Which station is closer to the smoke and what is that distance? So we're going to look for sides A and B. Actually, we're just going to look for whichever one is, uh, uh, is closer, or whichever one is shorter. We can start by using opposite parts of the triangle to our advantage. Side A is opposite a 56 degree angle, which is smaller than being opposite uh, an 82 degree angle. The smaller side is always opposite the smaller angle. So A is going to be the distance we're looking for. So we don't actually need to compute both distances. We know that A is going to be our winner. The one thing that we need to remember uh, is if they're asking which station is closer to the smoke, uh, that's going to be Bob's station. So A actually represents Bob's distance to travel. The setup is really 80 to 90 percent of solving a problem. So now that we have a good setup, uh, if you haven't moved ahead and solved this, this would be a good time to pause and try it yourself. Make sure you can get uh, the right answer. Here's my solution. First, I'm going to find angle C so that we can use uh, the law of sines. That gives uh, enough information to use the law of signs.
Now we, be, we answer the actual question. Good luck, Bob. Here's our final example for this video. Uh, take a moment, read this, and try to sketch it. Here's my sketch. I'm going to label the points at the peak and the point uh, inside the mountain uh, where the altitude would land. The first thing to notice uh, is that triangle BCD is a right triangle. Uh, this should guide your strategy. Wouldn't it be nice if we had one of those other sides so that we could use Sokotoa? That would make it a much easier problem. What we're going to end up doing is solving for side BC. I'm going to call that X. Uh, to get there, uh, we're going to solve uh, for X in triangle ABC. This is something that's very solvable because we can actually get a second angle uh, to go with that side, and we'll solve it with law of sines after that. The easiest way to get a second angle is to use the exterior angle theorem. 25 degrees is, a, uh, is an exterior angle of triangle ABC. The exterior angle theorem says this. So what that means is this exterior angle of 25 is equal to the sum of the remote interior angles. The remote interior angles are the two that are not adjacent. So these two, 23 plus this angle, must give you 25. This must be 2 degrees, therefore. Take a moment and see if you can solve this yourself. Remember, you're going to find the value of x uh, using triangle ABC and then Sokotoa to finish the problem. Here's my solution. Since we're going to use this number in a later uh, computation, we're going to store it for accuracy. I'm going to mark a star on the x to indicate that it's a stored value. And there's our answer. Before moving on to the next video, uh, you are now, uh, you know how, uh, have everything you need to solve problem number one on the problem set. It'd be worth your time to do the practice. We'll resume with law of cosines in the next video.